Hello and welcome to the IT Career Guide YouTube channel. On this channel, I often talk about how you can get into IT, about IT certifications or information technology certifications, and how to plan out your IT career and get the most out of it. So in today's video, I want to answer one of the most often asked questions. How long does it take to get IT certified? So there are quite a few certifications out in the market. You can think about Microsoft, Salesforce, Cisco, and so on. Um, the list just keeps going and going. CompTIA is another one. So there's a lot of uh, movement and there's a lot of activity in the certification market. Almost every vendor has their own certification program. And then of course there are some vendor neutral certifications and they're all slightly different. They all have complexity levels. Some certifications can only be achieved after passing several exams. So it's not just a single exam that you would be studying for. So uh, just be aware, depending on what your goal is, um, there could be several exams involved and you are not certified until you have all these exams completed. So if you take a single exam certification and you look at the training material, um, the uh, outlay of the course and everything. And let's say there is the assumption that um, if you go through a training class, there's about 20 hours of learning involved. So I think it's safe to say that um, the 20 hours is really just to go through the material once. So that does not necessarily mean that you can retain that knowledge and are ready for an exam. So to be on the safe side, I would probably say if you are looking at a course that says 20 hours and then you're ready for the exam, double or triple that time. Of course, we are all different and we have different methodologies to study and to learn and to retain the knowledge. So it might not be as easy. Unless you have a photographic memory, um, then it might be really just the 20 hours or even less. But for most people, for the rest of us, so to speak, it's really okay. We go through the training material. We have to take notes. We have to go reread our notes. We might not understand everything right away. So we have to go deep here and there. So there are different areas. And I think it's a safe bet uh, to really say double the time um, that you see recommended for a certain course. So again, if it's 20 hours, I would probably count to 40 or 60 hours of studying and learning. And then, of course, you have to think about, OK, how do you break it down? So, I mean, can you study four hours a day? Can you study two hours a day or just one hour a day? So if you take 60 hours of studying and learning and you only have an hour a day available, well, guess what? It takes you about 60 days. So if you take breaks in between or weekends or anything, you're easily looking at 90 days. So that's three months. And that's really what I um, feel like is, is achievable for most people. Let's assume you have a job, you're working, you might not necessarily work in IT, you have family. Um, well, guess what? Cutting out an hour or two a day for studying becomes challenging at that point. So when I started studying for my first Microsoft certification, it took me about three months of dedicated studying and preparing for the exam. And um, with the following exams that I followed through and uh, in the end became a Microsoft certified systems engineer, um, yeah, I would say it's probably three months um, per certification slash exam. So again, if it's a single exam to become certified, uh, three months. Um, in my case, um, it was a total of six exams I had to pass to become a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. So overall, I feel like for these more complex certifications, um, if you go and uh, look between two and three months, maybe even three to four months, depending on how much time you have available, then you're probably on the safe side. It also depends on how you can study. If you're just sitting in a car listening to a YouTube video or going through a course, or if you can sit at home at a table or at a desk, you can take notes, uh, you're fully focused, you're not disrupted, um, you definitely have an advantage compared to just reading 20 minutes during your lunch break in your car um, or a little bit before work. So think about how good and bad your study situation is and really how it carries you forward. So the other thing I want to point out is, are you studying just for the exam or are you studying to obtain the knowledge and to be able to retain it? 
So there are differences. I mean, since IT certifications were invented, um, there were also brain dumps and exam cram style of uh, study material, something that really prepared you just for the exam. It covered specifically for the questions that were asked and um, there weren't really, these, these study materials weren't really um, aimed to give you that knowledge that you can use it. So I highly recommend that you study well, for the exam, but with the intent to retain the knowledge so that you can use it at work because that's really where it matters. I mean, if you become certified and you fail in a job interview to answer simple technical questions, um, well, the certification is worth nothing. So really think about, okay, study for retaining the knowledge, how to use it at work. Potentially, if you have access to the technology you're studying for, play with it, use it learning by doing it's really the best way of retaining the knowledge for the long term of course there will be the time when you feel you are ready and you have like a week or maybe 10 days left before the exam you have it scheduled and now you're ready that's the time where you study specifically for the exam where you look at the style of questions that you get um, if it's just a simple uh, checkbox or radio button or if it's a scenario type of question that's when you study for those but really to understand okay I want to walk into the exam and I don't want to be surprised by the type of questions that are there. The content of the questions you should know. That's the easy part. But these questions can be tricky. And so that's really when you study specifically for the exam. Other than that, you really study to take that knowledge, put it into play when you start working in that field or if you're already in IT, um, that you can use it to advance with your career. And last but not least, I really want to recommend that you use more than one source of information to study. So let's say you buy a Udemy course or on Lynda or a Skillshare or you go to a paid training class, be it virtual or in person. Use more than one source of study material to obtain the entire knowledge. Everyone has a slightly different angle at the material. They explain it slightly differently. And sometimes if you're really struggling with understanding a certain concept, um, using a different source, it will really help. So YouTube is a great source. There's a lot of training material, but be aware it's not always up to date. Certifications expire. Certifications get updated and then there is a new version of the exam. So look at the timestamp of the YouTube videos that you're using. Potentially check out the resource or check out that individual that puts that course up. Maybe even reach out and hopefully you get a response either via the, com via the comments or through the about page where you can select the email address of that individual and ask. Um, so that's really uh, critical. I mean, you don't want to make the mistake of studying something that is outdated. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so as well. I would really appreciate it. There's also the little notification bell. If you want to click on that one, then you get notified when I upload a new video, which usually happens once a week. So thank you again for watching and good luck with um, your IT certification. Have a great day. Bye-bye.